Hi everyone, how's your day? I hope you have a great day. Today, I'll review overseas properties again. <laughs> My intention of doing this video is to be educational. Help me to like this video so that more people will watch this video and also to subscribe my YouTube video so that you will not miss any funny and educational videos and it will help you to be a giant Huawei by buying the right property ma. Before I record this video, I was thinking why why do some people still buy overseas property? Is it because there's no more opportunities in Singapore? And I also want to share my personal experience. Why do I dislike overseas property? Let's start one by one. Okay, number one, it is not a proven strategy. And it's confirmed, it's not a winning one. I have never heard of any Singaporeans buying UK properties and make money one. Never. Except London. Central London. But again, don't misunderstand me because I believe in properties and I do strongly believe that the locals staying in UK, they know what to buy, where to buy and definitely have made money out of it. So number two, wrong property type. We Asians, we like to buy properties. Europeans are different. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Their home ownership is not high. Most of them, they like to rent. Even they buy, they like space and they prefer houses not flats and definitely not flats in city center which foreigners like to buy it's the same like singapore foreigners also like to buy our cbd properties but in the end never make money the one very good example dyson you know how much you have lost i'll just put the article here locals who buy in outskirt which is ocr singaporeans make a lot of money because singaporeans know what they want and that drive the demand you need to understand what they buy not what you like to buy because this is how you exit in the end so everyone i will give you this tip before you buy you already need to know the exit strategy you don't buy already then you go and think oh can i exit or not no this is not how you buy property ayo number three FX risk. Interest rate and exchange rate risk is high due to poor Brexit. FX works in both ways, but sadly in UK for the past two, three years after the Brexit, things never really worked out well. Pounds from $2 drop, 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 drop until today $1.66 cent, $1.67. It is very worrisome, drop of almost 12% in a year. If you enter in the last two years, you have definitely lose on your FX what? But some of you, you may want to challenge, hey, Eric, I foresee that pounds are now $1 will go back to $3. Then you as well buy Forex. Isn't it easier? You are currently buying property there's already a risk whether the property will appreciate. So that's why having exposed to another FX risk, are you comfortable or not? What I've learned and what I've heard, never look down on Singapore dollar. Because we never know that pounds one day will become this low. Can you imagine it goes even lower? So if you can't take this risk, then why are you buying? Number four. Down payment is high. Although purchase price something like 253,000 pounds, took 80% loan, down payment should be 20% plus stamp duty. Put in all the hidden fees, you add up, you see, you see, you see, you see. You work out is also 30% down payment ma. Your sing dollar, your down payment is also near to 120 to 130k. That's a lot of money for your overseas property. Eh. Then where is their little or no money down? I do have a HDB upgrader who comes to me and wants to upgrade. During the consultation, I was looking at his case. Everything is normal. It's just that he don't have savings. So the next thing I asked him, eh, actually you can upgrade to a 3 wheeler but I, I, I actually need more money. After that, then he tell me, Eric, actually I have because recently I just committed UK properties after attending that program. <music> Aya, even you buy one, is hun I mean the down payment is only 130k. Ma. That was thinking my mind. La. So he was saying, I, I think there's a lot of opportunity. So I bought three. <laughs> what? Hey, everyone, you know three times 130k is almost 400,000 cash. Eh. Do you know how much this money can help you to build your Singapore portfolio or not? Everyone, or you want to tell me you want to retire there. You want to retire there, tell me earlier la. Then I'll just tell you sell everything, just move there together with them. <laughs> and remember, they have a company, they are business owner, they are different from you. And they may have already achieved their two residential properties in Singapore. Then how about you? 
Imagine today you are buying your first property. Your first property is so important because if you buy it right, it will give you a lot of confidence and faith for you to continue to grow your assets, just like me. So imagine you bought the wrong one, an overseas property, and in the end, you don't make as much as what they have projected. Then how? I can imagine if I lose money on my first property. Will I buy my second property? I will have a lot of doubts. Uh. I'll be fearful. Uh. I will not have guts anymore to enter, which is normal. I do not want to see anyone buying your first property as an overseas property. Number five, rental is good. Very hard to monitor your overseas rental properties. Rental you means nothing if you get yourself a tenant from hell. Nigel replied to them, yes, he's aware of those property management services, but they do not help you chase after rents. He cannot imagine he needs to travel 30 hours back and forth to deal with bad tenants. The interest rate is around 4%. Whoa. So when people say rental you is good, uh, rental you is higher than Singapore. Rental you is guaranteed. Uh, a passive income is healthy. Even I let you win, rental is good. And because they took an uh, interest-only loan, means that you only pay interest per month. You don't pay the principal at all. This means that your outstanding loan will be forever the amount. Lah. It will not go up, you will not go down. It will be forever the amount. And after minusing the interest, you are getting 320 pounds. Ah. If you convert to Sing dollar, it's about $550. And, but again, you must remember that you down 130,000 sing dollar and your passive income 500 la. You as well don't eat a few luxury meal. Then you can save your 130k ma. I have a property in Manchester myself and after all the work, taxes and FX risk, maybe can buy me a last cinema after 5 years. Number 6. I don't think you can exit. Whether can exit is most important. 5% you also no point. And UK so big, most people want to live in landed. That is the main problem. Looking at the price that you enter for one bader, 250,000 pounds, two bader, 300 over 1,000 pounds. This amount, the locals will buy landed which is cheaper than this price. I mean, for people to buy in city center, you already buy in at a premium price. That's why I totally have no confidence in exiting. Anyway, have you guys sold and made any profits from UK already? If not, it's just theory and talk. I do not feel confident in putting so much money so far away. So imagine today you can't exit. Then going back to rental law, you will be getting $550 every month. And to get back your down payment of 130k, 130k divided by 550 is 236 months. Eh. It's 20 years. Eh. Then that time ah. Very old already la. Don't even have the energy to take plane to UK already la. Then I'll be thinking, what if I didn't commit 20 years ago la? Then I'll be young again la. And remember la, you took an interest only loan. That means your outstanding loan has been forever that amount. Ah. So let's say worst scenario, you sell lower than what you have bought in. In some cases, you may top up in cash. Ah, and plus, sorry, ah, you need to top up cash times pounds. Ah. Number seven, it really surprised me eh, because I didn't know that the plan for buying overseas property is this. After I heard that exiting is difficult, they propose to continue buying by gearing up from your property. Okay, gearing up also means second mortgage. That means by getting another loan out from your existing property, use that loan to buy another one in UK. What? This is a super great example of over leveraging. Ah. Uh, if you think that as it is an uh, issue, uh, oh, then you gear, uh, you gear and buy more. Oh, wow! <laughs> <coughs> you want to build a portfolio that you cannot sell forever, man, guys. The, the hole that you are digging uh, is bigger and bigger. Eh. And I'm doing this because I want to educate and create awareness about the risk involved in buying overseas property brought in by local communities. And I always believe good projects will definitely snatch out by locals, ma. Do you think Amo developer will bring overseas to sell the project, man? Don't need, ma, because 98% of the people already snatch out and most of them are locals, leh. 
So and the world is so big. Why do local communities just like to choose this project in UK, bring half the world back to Singapore to sell to you leh? Am I right or not? Is their intention to help you make money? Or is their intention is something else? Lastly, after I shared all the above pointers, and if you still feel YOLO la, FOMO la, KUKU la, then just go and buy la. And for those people who have bought, you just need to do one thing la. You just need to pray hard la, that Eric is wrong. This person is wrong, this comment is also wrong, and the whole community's view is wrong. And you pray hard la, that you will make money. Because I want to see you make money. You must understand because of my all my years of experience, I don't see anyone making. That's why I want to voice out my concern. If you already bought it, don't buy anymore. Everyone, really, thank you for your time to watch this video because I really doing this video purely for educational purpose. Do your own research. Do your own due diligence before you buy anything. Hey everyone, stop searching for Eric Chu latest. Just subscribe to my YouTube channel now so that you will not miss any videos. So I see you in the next video.